Greetings my esteemed subscribers, today I thought to respond to a lot of questions, but before I begin to do so I would like to answer the most commonly asked question over these last few weeks and that is when my book is coming out and I am very happy to say that it's currently being printed in the glorious nation of Latvia, so it will be done in two or three weeks, then it will be available and it is available worldwide and it is written in English and if you ask what it's about it's basically my collected teachings in book form. So everything from training to philosophy and that sort of stuff and it's about 200 pages so um, yeah a long time in the making and I'm very happy that it's soon out so stay tuned I will make more videos when it um, is um, out and also I will announce on my other social media but uh, yeah it is in the works at least. So anyway on to the questions at hand and we will begin at subscribe star and we have how would you respond to the accusation that you are not a real fascist and actually just a social conservative with classical liberal leanings. I wouldn't respond to those accusations at all all. First and foremost, if we're talking about fascism, it's such loosely defined concepts, so you can't really say that you are a fascist or not. It's something that it's too broad. And also, I've said this before on my Instagram, and I will say it now as well, because it's a good opportunity. I'm not political, and I don't have an ideology. I'm driven by loyalty towards my family, my nation, my bioculture, and my civilization. I'm loyal to Mother Europe and to Mother Nature, and to Mother Sweden. So if you ask what drives me, it is not ideology, it is not politics, it is loyalty. Same aspect as when my forefathers followed our heroic kings out into battle. They didn't really care about politics, they did it for king and country, they did to defend their families, to defend the freedom of Sweden. Just as I'm sure most of your ancestors have done the similar thing, it's about loyalty, it's not about politics. So if you ask, am I this or am I that, I respond, no, it doesn't matter, I'm loyal and that's that. So there you have the answer to the question if I am whatever ideology I am. I have no ideology, I have loyalty and that is what drives me. If you ask about my worldview, I derive it from mother nature. And that's also my religion. I'll talk more about that later on. Anyway, moving on to another political question. Carl asks, I have noticed a lot of people are falling to the extreme right, which in my opinion is counterproductive, helping to promote a respectable new right-wing movement in Europe. In your opinion, what can be done to help catch people before they become so extreme? Actually, it's the other way around, they should become extreme before they become reasonable. When you first start waking up, becoming enlightened, take your first red pill, you become very extreme. Then as you progress in your enlightenment journey, you become more reasonable. So for example, if we're talking about, again, fascism or something like that, there might be a lot of younger guys who become attracted to fascism or the various fascist movements of the former century, then as they progress in their enlightenment journey, they start becoming more interested in traditionalism, for example, which is less extreme than by that way of measuring things. So I would say it's nothing bad with becoming too extreme, because if you want to get to the ultimate enlightenment, you have to go through a period of being extreme. Then of course, I'm the first one to say that bad Rhetoric is not something to be endorsed and it's absolutely nothing cool or edgy about commenting extreme stuff on uh, the internet. We also have to distinguish between extremism and radicalism. I am radical, I am a proud radical, so if I say I believe it's good to have a man and a woman and a loving family, I do believe it's bad with sexual promiscuity for the social cohesion of um, a nation. If I say that in today's modern world, I am very radical because it's very different, but I'm not extreme. Because if we're looking upon it, historically speaking, every culture basically in every time has placed value upon the family and upon sexual restriction. 
So I'm radical in today's standards, but I'm not extreme. The left-wing madmen are the extreme ones. So I hope that was a good enough answer at least. Greg asks, will you be organizing or participating in more offline community building? Yes, most definitely indeed. I have done so quite a bit over the last year and it's uh, very rewarding. It's always nice to meet uh, kind-hearted and uh, positive people who appear in these sort of social settings. If you are in Sweden, check out Jotunheim Nutrition's Instagram page for uh, some updates when we do have MMA trainings, etc. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to swing by if you have the heart on the right place. Irish Steel asks, I know it's a bit late, but Golden One, have you ever heard of a fantasy series called Elric of Melnibon? If not, all I can say is Ombre, why not? It's pretty much the origin of all the dark fantasy stuff you like. I have not, but I included the question because of the use of ombre. It's uh, it's nice to say, so if you have a mate who doesn't want to go to the gym because he's tired or something, you can say to him ombre and he will um, get his mind set straight and join you in uh, the Temple of Iron. So start saying ombre, it's fun. Moving on to Patreon. We have a question from Montana. After taking the glorious pill, I began both consciously and unconsciously distancing myself from many former friends and acquaintances due to incompatible worldviews and aspirations. While I love and enjoy the time spent in the company of my woman, I can't help but to feel like I'm stuck playing the game of life in single player mode. What recommendations would you give in finding or building a tribe of masculine and high thumos friends that inspire and motivate and motivate one another. And Helvetic John reinforces the question by saying, Good question, friend. You are not the only one in this situation. Um, indeed, indeed, you are not alone in this situation. I've gotten this question for um, about three or four years now. And uh, yeah, it is a common thing. And I don't really have a good answer. What I can say is that try to go to places where there are high thumos men it can be an mma gym for example or it can be a hunters club or it can be a powerlifting gym or a strongman gym or something like that now of course i'm fully aware that these sort of things might not be available in the area where you are at so i can't really say i can say though if you are in sweden for example try to appear in um, various events that are being hosted with um, where I am, basically, because there's always good lads there. But in the broader West, I can't really give any good recommendation. But if you are active on Instagram, for example, and if you post a lot of things that you are doing, you can definitely meet up with like-minded guys. I have an American friend and supporter, shout out to you, Rob, who basically struck up conversations with guys on Instagram, and then he went on a trip to Europe and met up with a lot of them that they've been talking etc and sharing stuff on um, on Instagram so that can also be a good idea point being is that you have to be seen by others to um, yeah for them to contact you etc so be a shining beacon of light in the dark and you will attract like-minded people Steven asks golden one what does your title mean and what did you study at university my title means a lot of things, but incorruptible one is one of the meanings, and I did study economics at Uppsala University. Jack asks, any updates on your products being available in the Americas? And uh, Legio Gloria is available worldwide, and as I said, the book will be available as well. But the supplements, it will probably take... A little while until that becomes a reality unfortunately but I am working on it and it would be absolutely amazing if I can launch Jotunheim Nutrition in the new world. Matthew asks what are your thoughts on conscription? I think it's a great idea. I differ a bit from libertarians here but I have absolutely nothing against conscripting young men into the army to make men of them. That was one of the main points with the Swedish army during the last century. You got in 18 and 19 year olds and uh, when they 
had spent their mandatory year there, they were more uh, more men. Um, so yeah, I do think it's a good idea. Then of course it is, if you want an as professional army as possible, it can perhaps be better if you only go, if you spend the resources on the guys who are most motivated to um, to join the army. But I do believe that all men should be able to take up arms to defend their country, whether they like it or not, everyone has to do their duty. Devon asks, how do you view those that take their own lives due to depression? I recently lost a good mate of mine this way and have mixed feelings on it since. Uh, deep topic, I will make a separate video on suicide, but obviously it's not something I endorse except for certain cases where it is better for everyone involved if someone basically does it. But uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's a good idea. I think depression, it, it is a lot of things you can do uh, to better your mental health, training being one of them, uh, eating a better diet, try to eat a uh, diet high in meat and fat and low in carbohydrates, try to spend a lot of time outside, try to spend a lot of time in the sun, try to spend a lot of time in the gym and you will feel better. But anyway, I will respond more at length in a later video. Peter Pim asks, reading recommendations after finishing Hated and Proud, Ultras Contra Modernity and Horus Heresy. By the way, I look forward to the new shorts coming out. Yes, the new shorts are out. And yeah, Horus Heresy and Hated and Proud, great books. I would recommend actually Weston Price teachings. It uh, I have made a video upon it, but I also do recommend that you read the book. It's uh, very interesting, in my humble opinion at least. Then also you can read The Oxygen Advantage of Patrick McKeon, but I will make a separate book review video in the coming week. I, I believe it's time for that. Joseph asks, Golden One, it's great to see you open up the Q&A thread. Those tend to be my favorite videos and threads. My question is this, while I know you said earlier in some videos your military service was mandatory in Sweden, did you consider staying in the army. Uh, I will answer that first. It was sort of mandatory. It was mandatory on paper, but I did it voluntarily because if I didn't want to do it, I could have said, you know what, I have a pain in my foot and they would have let me go. So it was rather a luxury for me to be able to do it than anything else. I had mates who didn't get to do it even though they wanted because they had some obscure allergy that didn't even cause them trouble. So uh, I am very very fortunate in having to uh, be able to do the military service. And yes, I did think about staying, uh, becoming some sort of officer, but um, even then I knew the the path to uh, saving my country wasn't going to be military, so then I decided to study instead and go that path. But yes, I did want to when I was done, because I sort of missed it even the week after I got out from the army. Uh, so yeah. Moving on with the question, and would you say that helped you contribute to your current success? I only ask because many people in the US see the military and as a last resort, but for me it's an opportunity to improve and open up new doors in my life. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's a start, and I wanted to know if you had a similar experience. Yeah, most definitely. It uh, it was great for me. I was quite um, quite a victim of the modern world. I didn't really have that sense of stoicism and uh, discipline and uh, you know a lot of aspects that I matured in the army. So it definitely helped me later on as well. And again, I'm super thankful for having to uh, been able to do it. I can't speak for the American army though, uh, I had the extreme luxury again to be part of the older Swedish army that wasn't cocked at that stage, so this was in 2009, so it's um, yeah, not all too long ago, but in terms of um, cultural Marxism it's a lifetime ago, so yeah, I can say that at least, but how it looks today I can't say, I don't know, but I do definitely credit my experiences in um, in the army with a lot of mental uh, things that are good right now. Primarily discipline and stoicism and also recognizing the fact that you're not the center of the universe because I was, as many young men are in this day and age, quite uh, egocentric etc. But then I got that 
um, removed from me because I was just a, a man among men. Moving on from my man William. Career advice for younger lads. Do you suggest more of a ride a tiger style approach or is it best to pursue a simpler life in your view? Very tough question and I don't really want to answer this because it's up to you and I can't say, I can't give an answer that is um, satisfactory to you, to you in your particular situation. So take this with a massive grain of salt. Uh, I would definitely, if you have something that you want to study, that you're interested in and there is a uh, market for basically, go for it. Uh, I do believe in education. I do think it can be a good idea to pursue something like that. and. There are certain professions that are always needed, so I don't see any reason to abstain from that if you have the possibility. Then, of course, I don't encourage anyone to take student loans to study arts or something like that. But if it is something that can lead to something higher, I definitely believe uh, you should. Because if we're talking about economic collapses, etc., I don't believe it will happen. What I believe will happen is a slow and steady decline but you will still be well able to use your education if you um, if you get one so it can be a good investment then of course in sweden we have free education so it's quite different here from uh, america where you have to pay to get to college so uh, yeah a bit of a non-answer but uh, that's my take on it at least ian asks what is the hardest part of being a father so far is there any books on parenting you recommend Hopefully we'll be needing this advice sooner or later. I will send a prayer to Frey for you, my friend. It, um, it is glorious indeed. Uh, the hardest part yet is um, I haven't really stumbled upon any huge issues. A bit less sleep, but then again, my wife is really good at taking care of her and she's a very kind child, so I can't really complain at all. What I can say though is that I'm a bit worried about the future. Um, of Sweden and the West, so that is one aspect that I'm a bit, um, yeah, it worries me uh, a bit at least. But then again, that's why I do what I do, working metapolitically. In regards to parenting books, I would definitely recommend Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules of Life. I thought it was surprisingly good. And I will make a separate video on his book later on. I just don't want to promote other books too much before I have released my own, but uh, yeah, it is coming a, a book review of that particular tome of knowledge. Transtedt asks, Viking of Wisdom, what, what is the best protein powder other than whey for an old lactose intolerant man? My personal opinion is egg protein, but I already eat a lot of eggs every day. Yes, I would agree that egg protein is the best, but if you already eat a lot of eggs, I would recommend beef protein. Not perhaps the tastiest or most pleasant thing to drink, but at least it is good if you can't get away. Tyler Hamilton asks, Great Primark of Wisdom, next week I shall be moving out on my own alongside a friend of mine to pursue higher education in the hopes of doing more for the Great Crusade here in the USA. One thing we are both interested in is finally getting serious about hitting the gym and also fixing our diets to get in good shape. Alongside what you feature in your Gains Kitchen videos, are there any particular staple foods slash meals that you can recommend which are as cheap as possible so as to suit the budget of an American college student but still be as healthy as possible? Also. Any other tips, wisdom for a young Western guy going back to university would be appreciated. Uh, yeah, in regards to food, you have things such as oats and eggs. Egg is eggs are the best foods there are and uh, quite cheap as well. And then also, I would definitely recommend that you try to, if possible, get into contact with some sort of local farmer. Farmers see if you can get bulk prices. Perhaps you and your mate can buy in bulk together and save a few dollars on each order. Then whey protein is also quite um, cheap in terms of protein content. But uh, I would say oats, eggs and also potatoes. Usually it's quite cheap in Sweden at least. And in regards to advice for college, use the time wisely because you will probably have 
some time that you can decide upon what to do uh, yourself. So use that wisely by studying hard and studying other things, reading books that you find interesting in self-improvement, etc. And then, of course, train as much as possible. So yeah, enlightenment and progress on all fronts and uh, relish the opportunity to have a lot of time to, um, to decide yourself what to do with. From my man Mark Clark. Have you ever tried maximum intensity slow movement lifting? For example, going as slow as possible on a 500 kg leg press. I just started doing it and the results and ability for progression has been great. I know the imperial truth is quite simply higher intensity training. Heavy weight training is the best weight training. But what are your thoughts on the most optimal lift style two piece question combo uh, yeah no definitely I would say that uh, I try to do the lifts as fast as possible fast lifts equals fast results and if you want to get that explosiveness in your muscles it's a good idea uh, so I've always trained to do it as explosively as possible and uh, yeah just focusing on lifting as heavy as possible lifting with the mindset of progression and as of late i've also added some volume to my training because that is important as well so yeah that is my um, take on that then we have two more questions actually that i thought to respond and that is from joe from the perspective of a pagan how does it feel to live in the same lands as your ancient ancestors i'm a third generation american of french and german ancestry I don't feel a connection to the land here the way I imagine pagans living in Europe do. Well, I can't really say for certain since I haven't lived away for so much time. But uh, yeah, it feels good. I feel quite in tune with the nature more than anything. But then again, uh, I've been in America three times. I've enjoyed it. Uh, the nature there is great as well. So I wouldn't say America is bad in uh, that sort of way you still have your ancestors no matter where they are from that you can honor and uh, cherish so um, i wouldn't say it's necessary to live where your ancestors have been part of being european is also the adventurer and explorer spirit so i wouldn't dwell too much upon your geographical location just try to honor them anyway then also from steven I'm looking to rediscover my pagan roots. I'm of Basque descent, raised in Christian tradition and not sure where to start. I know the pantheon is different from Norse, however I don't feel this to be a big deal when trying to create one's own traditions. What are your thoughts? Um, I wish I could respond in a good way to that question, but I really can't. Um, first step, read up about your ancestors and I wouldn't necessarily look past your Christian heritage. It's been part of Europe for quite a long time and um, if we're looking upon Catholicism it is paganism to a large extent as well because when it came to Europe it had to adapt a lot of pagan um, philosophy in it to be um, accepted so I wouldn't look past that but otherwise you can always try to read up on Basque history as much as possible and try to make your conclusions from there. So, longest Q&A I have ever made. Feels good to have it done. Thank you for watching it. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to my words of wisdom, hopefully. I don't know if you uh, got any supreme enlightenment from watching this video, but hopefully you did. So anyway, I've gotten the audio recorder. Now I will start making Swedish history videos tomorrow. And the first video will be about viking mentality and rune stones so look forward to that and thank you again to all of my supporters who have contributed financially to you on subscribe star to you on patreon etc and since it's sunday today the training summaries will go up later after i have hit the gym and hit the boxing ring as well is what i will do today so have a blessed day ahead and who am i that's a secret i'll never tell xxo Boo!